Hey bitch, let's talk about bimbos. I don't know if you are a bimbo, or if you love bimbos, or if you're bimbo critical. But you know what I'm talking about when I talk about a bimbo. I'm talking about a skinny blonde who loves sex and shiny things and not much else. The hotter she is, the dumber she is. The more she's got going on here, the less she's got going on here. You should definitely ridicule her. Sexy little dum-dum. She has no value, so she has no real value. You're like way better than her because you use your head and your brain and you care about important things like war and maths. I just wanna know though, like, why superficiality is like a bad thing like i don't think there's anything wrong with like not having any death and i actually know someone who would totally agree with me he was the hero of the boy that you had a crush on when you were 15 and probably the hero of the boy you have a crush on now his name is friedrich nietzsche and um he's got a little bit of a reputation for hating women but actually all he said was since the beginning Nothing has been more alien, repugnant, and hostile to woman than truth. Her greatest art is the lie. Her highest concern, mere appearance of beauty. So true, King. Honestly, it's a metaphor, silly. Nietzsche was a continental philosopher, which basically means he wanted to be a poet, but his mummy wouldn't let him. So sad. Nietzsche is a great defender of the bimbo. He actually wrote a whole book called beyond good and evil and it's like a big fuck no to simple dichotomies like man and woman and true and false and good and evil and it's like a total attack on the enlightenment's like obsession with universal morality and its connection to truth so in this book he opens it with the metaphor right he says what if the truth is a woman in this sort of like metaphor world that Nietzsche is creating obviously men are the truth right because they're like objective and certain and consistent and firm women are like irrational and obscure and superficial um sort of like lies like i didn't say it was like a nice metaphor like i'm not defending the metaphor the metaphor is kind of shit but like i think it's like nicer to be like compared to a lie than like being a liar that would be shit, wouldn't it? But Nietzsche doesn't think traditional truth is like based at all. So I'm not gonna cry about it. So Nietzsche thought that these old dudes like Plato and Kant and Schopenhauer were just like obsessed with the truth. Just like crazy driven by the truth. Like anything subjective, they just reject because like obviously it's false, right? And he was sort of like, isn't that weird that all of these like philosophy bros are so sure that the truth is this like certain, firm, objective thing. They're so sure that the truth is like a man. And he was like, shit, what if the truth is a bitch? So Freddie says that there is no grand truth waiting to be uncovered. There's only competing fictions. So when someone claims that something is true, that's actually violence. Or at the very least, it's like a huge imposition. When someone says that something is inferior or dangerous or regressive, that has nothing to do with truth. That is a moral decision. And these moral decisions actually just regulate people's behavior. So when that bitch Cindy said my skirt was too short, it wasn't because my skirt was actually too short, it's because she was being a judgy bitch. A preference for surface over depth or depth over surface is just that, a preference. There is no way to say that one is morally inferior to the other because there's no universal truth. There's not even a true self. There's just like fictions competing like all the time. The bimbo's choice of style over substance or style as substance is actually incredibly Nietzschean. A bimbo might be fake, but a preference for real things over fake things is actually just moral prejudice. So you like books more than boobs. Go off, doesn't make you a better person. Nietzsche also thinks that women should stop trying to fight for equality with men or be more like men. He calls this process Horrification. He talks about men a lot. He talks about their obsession with maths and evidence and axioms, and he calls them boring as fuck. And he's fine. Nietzsche thinks there are two ways to think. 
There's a moral way to think and there's an aesthetic way to think. And he thinks the moral way is kind of shitty because the world is funny and complex and we're all self-aware now and morality just doesn't have what it takes to deal with that. So for Nietzsche, women's obsession with appearance is actually like a huge strength. We get symbols. A bimbo to Nietzsche is so much stronger than a debate bro because a bimbo is not dumb enough to try and rationalize her way through the world. <laughs> So the whole point of this book for Nietzsche is to like rag on philosophy for being so obsessed with like certainty and rationality and consistency. That's the truth to them. And he's like, maybe the truth should be like a little bit more like art, a little bit more subjective and meaningful that way. Maybe you can even have a little bit of fun. I want to talk to you about another philosopher dude. Um, the boy you like is gonna love him. His name is Jean Baudrillard. He's this French baddie that used all these cool words like simulacra and hyperreality. Simulacra is like so easy, I'll explain it to you. So you know when you go to Starbucks and you get a pumpkin spice latte, obviously that tastes like a pumpkin, but also it doesn't taste like a pumpkin, right? Like it does taste like a pumpkin, but if it tasted like an actual pumpkin, you'd be like, this is fucking disgusting. Like, what the fuck? It's sort of like a pumpkin. Actually, when you think about what a pumpkin tastes like, you probably think about a pumpkin spice latte. You don't think about an actual fucking pumpkin. And that's kind of like why I brought this up. A bimbo is sort of like simulacra. In the same way, a pumpkin spice latte is simulacra because like both of us are like copying something. Like when I put my lashes on, I'm copying something kind of. Hmm. I guess what I'm trying to say is like, I'm not trying to be a fucking pumpkin. And then you've got like simulation, which is when like a whole world stands in for a whole world. And then you've got hyper reality, which is a real scary shit. It's when we can't tell anymore. We can't tell if we're in a simulation or if we're in the real world. It's like that movie that boy made me watch with Keanu Reeves in it. Fuck, what was that called? Mmm, Johnny Mnemonic. Today's bimbo is totally different though. She doesn't even have to be blonde. There are himbos and thembos. There are bimbos of color. You can be a gay bimbo. It's amazing. Bimbos are using their bodies as a site for a political discussion. They're using their appearance to send a message. The French hotties of philosophy, Gare or Christiva or Wittig, they all talk about like, the body is a political site. Oh, and de Beauvoir says that the body is a situation. And Foucault talks about the way that society has traditionally disciplined the body. He talks about like the body's creative abilities to like resist political grip. I think that's what bimbos are like trying to do, right? They're trying to say that they're using their aesthetic to resist the grip of gender roles. They're trying to get out there and make Judith Butler proud with their mocking enactments of gender norms. Today's bimbo is so political. She's like anti-capitalist and anti-sexist and anti-racist. She's got real self-awareness. Now, I don't wanna be a killjoy because that would be against the bimbo ethos. I'm gonna say it. Oh, I should. No, I'm going to. I'm gonna say it. You can't be a bimbo and be anti-capitalist. I'm sorry, you can't do it. You can't do it. I know you wanna do it. You can't do it. Because, bitch, you look expensive. Don't lie to me, I know. It costs money to look like that. You just can't say you're anti-capitalist while your identity is rooted in consumerism. It doesn't make any sense. You can't liberate yourself through mediated communication just like accelerating the neoliberal fucking machine. You look like a dumb bitch when you say that. And that's fine, but like, stop trying to look smart. Just be a dumb bitch. Like that's better. Given that subversive things are so quickly co-opted into mainstream culture, so it can continue to proliferate the myth that there already is difference and you already can choose who you want to be and you are free to make that choice. How do you stop the bimbo from becoming mainstream? Cause you see, the thing is for something to be subversive, there has to be some sort of like personal risk. When you make the bimbo political and you tell everyone that you're just a smart girl pretending to be a dumb bitch, who would do that? 
then you sort of take away the bimbo's political power. Because having some deep self-awareness and strong political message and telling everyone you're actually not as dumb as you appear, it's not very risky. So Baudrillard would actually say that Marxism is not radical. Like, I don't want to bore you with the details, but there was like all this drama in France in the late 60s and Bodhi got involved in it. It was like students were striking and workers were striking and the French Socialist Party couldn't do anything about it. And even though he'd been like a super duper Marxist up to that point, he kind of was like bummed about it because he was like, holy shit, Marx just full on accepted this ideology of production. He didn't question it at all. So really Marxism is just like a mirror to capitalism. It's just like using the same language. Why does everything have to be productive, you know? And like even talking, like we produce meaning. Like when I heard that, I was like, wow, you're the smartest boy I've ever spoken to. When Marx accepted the ideology of production and said that production and labor was something natural to human beings, he wasn't describing anything, he was creating something, okay? So if you want to rise above the ideology of production, you need to do two things. One, you need to stop trying to naturalize production. And two, you need to cut it out with this object-subject divide. Like, honey, stop trying to act like there's some huge difference between the truth and fiction because it like really isn't anymore. Or maybe there never was. I don't know. Is this philosophy? Baudrillard thinks that we can rise above the language of production. He doesn't think that everything should be understood through a framework of liberalism or socialism. As cool as a utilitarian, stack citing, book reading, fact finding Marxist bro may seem, nothing is as powerful as a hot dumb bitch. So like Baudrillard would tell us that the biggest weapon we have against production is seduction, right? Like, okay, seduction is like feminine. Not because seduction is like slutty, okay? Because seduction and femininity both aren't real. Simone de Beauvoir said that if you're looking for the essential like quality of femininity, good fucking luck because it's not there. It's just like mystery surrounding emptiness. There's nothing underneath it all. Think of production and like realism like a man. They need constant affirmation. Yeah, babe, you are the truth. You are real, you're so real. Babe, you couldn't be any more real. Seduction doesn't really care about the truth. Like it's like theater or magic. It's about making you look and keeping your attention. It exists in the world of appearance and appearance can easily be changed. Unless you dyed your hair red, in which case you're gonna have to go back to brunette first before going blonde, and that's probably gonna take a couple of months. But you could wear a wig, so my point stands. And the reason it's so powerful against production is because like when production tries to say, hang on, that's not real. Seduction is like, yeah, bitch, I wasn't trying to be real. Uh, and that is why the bimbo is a revolutionary seductress. She's not real. She's not trying to be real. She knows gender norms are fake, but she doesn't need to tell you that they're fake. She doesn't need to tell you that they're real. She just takes them and makes them something more than fake. She gets your attention, she keeps your attention, and she doesn't do anything with it except play. Mwah! Philosophy is fun. <laughs> Hey guys, thank you so much for watching my video. I hope you enjoyed it. Um, I hope it was fun. Um, if you are interested in learning more about Nietzsche's morality, particularly Beyond Good and Evil, or Baudrillard's seduction, or if you want to know more about what the French existentialist had to say on the body and its relationship to politics, I'm going to be doing a Twitch stream where I look at these things a bit more rigorously. I can answer any questions that you might have. Um, I'll be putting that up here when it's done so if you like that kind of content please give me a follow please follow me on twitch if you want to be involved in the conversation um and i'll put all the details about that in the info section um but thank you so much for watching let me know if there's anything you would like um me to cover because i'm looking at doing more philosophical analyses in the future um yeah stay cool <laughs>